let's go ahead and get ready for this test. I'm going to go over the review sheet with you so you know how to do every one of these. Number one says evaluate this ex expression. This expression is 1 over 4 squared. And what this is equal to is 1 squared over 4 squared. Of course, what this is equal to is 1 times 1 over 4 times 4. One times one is of course one, four times four is 16. So that gives us the answer one over 16. All right, next we've got to evaluate the expression 3.2 times 10 to the sixth power. Well, when we see 10 to the sixth power, what it means is 10 times itself six times. It's pretty easy to go to compute because it means I'm gonna have six zeros at the end of this. So in essence, this is gonna be equal to 3.2 times, well, that'd be a one with six zeros on it. Which, of course, is a million. And this is going to, remember, for every zero that's here, I'll be moving this decimal over, which means I'm going to move this decimal over, and there'll be five zeros after it. So this would be three, two, zero, 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 zero. And as we can see, I moved the decimal because it was between three and two, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So 3,200,000 is the answer. All right, number three, identify the greatest common factor of 16 and 42. Take the two numbers and we break them down. When I break down 16, I know I can make four times four. But I want to break these down by halves so I can go ahead and compute them a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what times 2 will equal 16. That's easy. 2 times 8. But I know 8 can be broken down by taking 2 times 4. And I know 4 can be broken down by taking 2 times 2. And so that means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. Now let's try 42. 42 can be broken down by taking 2 times, well, tw 21. I know 21 can be broken down by taking 3 times 7. So to make 42 would be 2 times 3 times 7. So now I have to circle everything that I know is alike in both of these. And I see that 2 is in both of them, but the rest of these are all 2, and this is a 3 and a 7, and that's it. That means 2 is my greatest common factor. If there was another number that was alike, I would circle them, even if it was another 2, and then I would multiply it to the number uh, that I found over here. So if there was another 2 I found, it would be 2 times 2, and it would be 4, but this is not the case. We have 2 times 42, 
uh, excuse me, two times three times seven. So uh, when we factor this out, two is my greatest common factor. All right, evaluate the expression 36.8 divided by 11, excuse me, multiplied by 11.5 minus 2.5 times 3 to the second power. When I evaluate this, I got to follow PEMDAS. PEMDAS says I will do parentheses first. So I'm going to work inside my parentheses here. And there's a parentheses in a parentheses. And this says 2.5 times 3. So this can be rewritten. Uh, my first thing I'm going to write is 36.8 Uh, I'm going to divide that by, over here we see that we have 11.5, uh, and we're subtracting what's inside here. Now, we know 2.5 times 3, that's going to give us 7.5. And now we're going to be squaring whatever is inside there. We're still dealing with parentheses, so. So this is going to be equal to, we got 36.8. And again, we have the division sign. And we have, now we have 11.5 minus 7.5. Okay, so 11.5 minus 7.5. The zeros come down. 11 minus 7 is 4. So that means we're going to have 4 as an answer. And now we've got 36.8 divided by 4. But remember, 4 is still in parentheses to the second power. All right. Now we've got to do exponents. This is going to give me 16 to be dividing that by 16 because 4 to the second power is 4 times 4 that's 16 so now I've got to take 36.8 and divide it by 16 luckily uh, we can go ahead and divide it right over here 36.8 All right, uh, we've got 16 and 16 make 32, so I can put a 2 here and put a 32 down here. That'll give us 4.8. I have to think, how many times does 16 go into 4.8? Uh, I'm going to try 3, and because 6 times 3 is 18. I'm going to carry the one that's going to give me a 4, and that will be the 48 I was looking for. Uh, I have to remember, since this was 16, my decimal is here, which means this 3 is going to be over here. So my answer would be 2.3. All right, uh, let's try number five. Write an algebraic expression for this situation. I'm going to type this out since I'm writing something. It says six times five less than y. Okay. Uh, 
I know I'm going to multiply something, but I also know 5 less than y is going to be y minus 5. And since it's 6 times that, I have to realize that I'm taking a parentheses around the y minus 5. And I'm multiplying all of this to 6. So my expression would be 6 times y minus 5. All right. Uh, number 6 says evaluate the expression for t equals 4, w equals 1 fourth, and x equals 2. If I was to rewrite this, I would say that I have uh, t to the second power, and that's 4. So I'm going to rewrite that to 4 to the second power. Minus 8w is going to be 8 times 1 fourth. And then, and please don't mistake this for 8 and 1 fourth because we're not adding them together, right? We're multiplying them together. And then we have divided by x. And we know that x is 2. So we're dividing all this by 2. All right. So now we follow PEMDAS. All right. We realize that we've got uh, parentheses first. There's nothing I can do in this parentheses, right? Then we got um, exponents, so we're going to do that first. So all this is going to be uh, 16 minus 8 times 1 fourth. divided by 2. To follow PEMDAS, I realize since I'm done with exponents, first I'm going to go ahead and do uh, my multiplication. My multiplication and division going from left to right is going to be right over here. So that's going to give me 16 again minus well, 8 uh, times 1 fourth is 8 times 1 divided by 4, and that's 2. And now we have 2 divided by 2. I have to do division first, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, so now we have 16 minus 1. And that's going to equal 15. And that's it. That's our answer for that one. Well, number 7 now says evaluate the expression. It's got 2.6. Looks like plus 6a divided by 3 for a equals 5. So we're going to replace a with 5. All right. So now this is going to give us 2.6 plus 6 times. Remember, a is 5, so this is going to be 6 times 5. And then we're going to divide that by 3. All right, that means we're going to have 2.6. We're going to be adding it to, I'm going to make sure that this is recognizable as a 2 because it almost looks like a 1. We see that this is going to be uh, 6 times 5, and that's 30. And it says we're dividing that by 3. So now we can rewrite this as 2.6. And 30 divided by 3 is 10. So that would be plus 10. We know anything multiplied by 10 brings a decimal over once. Actually, we're adding this, not multiplying it. I'm sorry. So, uh, well, this is pretty easy, isn't it? Uh, 
we got 2.6 plus 10. If we line up our decimals, that'll give us 12.6. So our answer has to be 12.6. All right, I'm just going to put underlined by all my answers so I don't mistake them for anything else. I circle this one over here. And let's see, there we go. All right, and now we got number eight. Which of the following expressions are equivalent? Well, to do that, I'm going to have to go ahead and break them down. Uh, 75 times y uh, is really just 75 times y. That's the simplest term I could put them in. But uh, can I simplify this one? Uh, well, you can't combine unlike terms because 45 uh, y plus 30 uh, there are two different terms that end in a different letter. So these are not equivalent because 75y does not equal 45y plus 30. And now we look at this and we're going to distribute our properties. 15 times 3y, that's 45y. And 15 times 2, that is 30. So This is 45y plus 30. And that means these two expressions here are equal. All right. Number nine, simplify the expression by combining the like terms. If I combine my like terms, I'm going to put my y's together first. And that would give me 5y. plus 2y. Remember to move the symbol that's in front of each term with it. Now we have 7, so we're adding 7 over here, minus 3. When I simplify this, I know 5y plus 2y is 7y. It's like 5 yo-yos plus 2 yo-yos. And then we see that 7 minus 3 is 4, so we're going to add 4. And lastly, simplify the expression by combining the like terms. Again, we're going to put the things alike. The only thing different over here is we have decimals. So we're going to put 6.3x. We're going to put that with the other x, which is a negative 3.5. We're going to add that to, uh, let's see, 5.6 plus 2.6. All right, when we put these together, we said that 3.6 minus 3.5 That's going to, let's see, we've got to borrow one, right? Remember, this is subtraction. So that's going to leave us 2.8. Over here, we have 5.6 plus 2.6, so we can stack down. And that's going to give us a 2, carry the 1, which will give us an 8.2. So now we can go ahead and put these together. Our last one will be 2.8x plus 8.2.
right, that's it. I uh, hope this helps with your preparing for your test, and we'll do some more in class. Good luck, everybody.